Hai ke ini. Tadi kenapa Hi, hello, welcome to the 8th annual MHS Poetry Out Law competition. I was looking at that today, I was like, I can't believe it's been eight years we've been doing this. Uh, Miss Preston and I started uh, participating in this um, competition in our first few years here as teachers. Our first competition was three students in the library with four people attending as an audience. And it's kind of it's fluctuated over the years, but it's been a pretty amazing thing to be a part of and have as part of our culture here at the school. So. My name is Lance Fisher. I teach English here, and uh, I'm pleased to be your host and MC. So first, I'd like to acknowledge the parents and family and friends of our competitors. Thank you for being here tonight and encouraging your favorite Bulldogs. This can be a scary thing to stand up here and speak at all in front of an audience, audience especially into a somewhat dark room. So uh, it's, it takes a lot of courage, so thank you for being supportive and, uh, and here to cheer them on. So, to help you understand what tonight is all about, I'll take a little moment to explain the Poetry Out Loud competition and then how tonight will work. Uh, Poetry Out Loud is a national program similar to the Spelling Bee, where there are school level competitions. So each of the competitors you see here tonight participated in the classroom competition and were deemed the victors uh, based on their skill and reciting. So we have seven people from seven different classes. Uh, we'll have a winner from tonight who will move on to a regional competition uh, between students from area high schools. That winner moves on to a state competition, and one state winner moves on to the national competition in Washington, D.C. It gets an all-expense-paid trip for them and an adult, and they get to compete in the capital uh, for a chance to win uh, some pretty substantial prizes and money for scholarships. It's pretty exciting. Uh, last year, one of our students um, Drew Shipman was able to move on to the state level, and a few years previous to that, the state winner Langston, uh, Langston Ward from Spokane ended up winning the entire thing. He won the national competition. So there are students from our area and region who have advanced uh, quite, a, quite a ways in the competition, and we're really proud to be a part of that. Uh, each student competitor tonight has selected and memorized two poems from uh, Poetry Out Loud anthology of over 600 poems, and these poems span from the 1500s to just a few years old from some of the most famous poets in the world. You might recognize some to poets that you've never heard of. Uh, they will present their poems one at a time in two separate rounds. Round one will be alphabetical order by last name, and round two will be in reverse alphabetical order by last name. So we'll have a competitor go first, and then I'll have time to prepare and go last. Each presentation will be scored by a panel of judges, whom I'll introduce in just a moment. Students will be judged on accuracy to the poem, which is, can be difficult to hear in an audience when you don't have the poem in front of you. Uh, physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, and overall performance. So there's several categories that they're evaluated in. Student scores from both poems are totaled together for a final score to determine the winner. So our judges tonight are over here in this little corner, and I'll introduce you some briefly. Uh, we have, from a few departments, we have Nancy Batchelor, we have um, uh, Aaron Young, we have Elizabeth Bates, and Kelsey Snyder as our judges, and Darcy Resitar will be working as a prompter, so uh, thanks to you guys for going around the side. And before we get on to the performance, I'd just like to acknowledge the true stars of tonight who are our student competitors. They've worked really hard to prepare their first poem and win the class competitions, and they've taken on that challenge at the end of the semester to memorize a second poem, prepare to recite it in front of an audience of people that they may or may not know. Uh, it's taken a lot of hard work and we're proud of all of you and all that you've already accomplished. So let's give them a round of applause. And before we begin round one, we'll do the movie theater thing and address a few business uh, items. First, we are not using a microphone for tonight's presentation because it's pretty easy to be heard in here. But in order to keep it quiet, we'd like you to do your part to be quiet and supportive. So we're going to ask you to turn off the phones and not just put them on vibrate. If you've ever been in a quiet room and a phone begins to go off with the vibration, it can be almost as distracting as the, uh, the ring itself. A few years ago, we actually had an amber alert, of all things, go off in the middle of the presentation and those trump your silent settings. So if you just turn them off for a few moments to make sure that the contestants aren't distracted while they are presenting, that would be fantastic. Um, if for some reason you need to leave during you know, the, rest, the recitations, if you would be so kind as to wait for a moment between competitors 
and just quietly step outside these doors right here. And if you're gonna come back and wait for a break between competitors, that would be fantastic as well. So finally, after each um, person recites, we encourage you to clap and applaud and snap your fingers or do whatever feels right for a poetry recitation and let your favorite students know how proud you are of them. So thank you again for being here and we'll begin with round one uh, in just a moment. So judges, are we ready? Everybody's ready right there? You forgot, you forgot a judge. We forgot a judge, who do we forget? Jason Carter. Is Jason Carter, that round for Jason Carter. Okay, Kelsey, Miss Snyder is doing the math, which is going to take all of her focus as an English teacher in the room. So. <laughs> all right, so we'll, we'll uh, bring our first contestant up to the stage. I will introduce our contestants one at a time. And as they introduce them, please feel free to applaud and cheer as they, as they make their way up the stage. So please welcome to the stage, reciting our first poem of the night, Suzette Herrera. Are you shaken? Are you stirred? By the whisper of love, spell bound by the word. Overseas, does time seem to crease? Like her calm gray eyes expands to the sky. And the kiss, the lips that you have kissed, turn to frost and fire. Observes desires. So, back to their birth, fade, water, air, earth, over breath and void. Is that love? No, but death. A passion, a shout, a deep breath in, a breath pouring out. And once that is flown, you must lie alone, without, without life, without love, poor flesh, sad bone. Thank you. Our second competitor reciter of the night is Josephine Jensen Pineda. The Listeners by Walter Delamont. Is there anybody there? said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door. And his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret, above the traveler's head. And he smote on the door again a second time. Is there anybody there, he said. But no one descended to the traveler. No head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his gray eyes, for he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky, for he suddenly lifted for he suddenly smote on the door, even louder, and lifted his head. Tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing to the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Eh, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hooks were gone. Our next reciter will be Anna Lopez Marino. Earhart. Each day 
I go into the fields to see what is growing and what remains to be done. It is always the same thing. Nothing is growing. Everything needs to be done. Plow, harrow, disc, water. Pray till my bones ache and hands rub. Blood raw with honest labor. All that grows is the slow and transitioned intensity of need. I have sown my seed on soil, guaranteed by poverty to fail, but I don't complain. Except to passerby who asked me why I work such barren earth. They would not understand me if I stooped to lift a rock and hold it like a child, or laugh, or told them it is their poverty I labor to relieve. For them, I complain. A farmer of dreams knows how to pretend. A farmer of dreams knows what it means to be patient. Each day, I go into the fields. Please welcome our next competitor, Elizabeth Lucas Alvarez. From the People, Yes, by Carl Sandburg. Lincoln, he was a mystery in smoke and flags, saying yes to the smoke, yes to the flags, yes to the paradoxes of democracy, yes to the hopes of government of the people, by the people, for the people. Not to debauchery of the public mind, not to personal malice nursed and fed, yes to the constitution when a help, no to the constitution when a hindrance. Yes to man as a struggler amid illusions, each man fated to answer for himself. Which of the fates and illusions of mankind must I choose for my own sustaining light to bring me beyond the present wilderness? Lincoln, was he a poet? And did he write verses? I have not willingly placed a thorn in any man's bosom. I shall do nothing through malice. What I deal with is too vast for malice. Death was in the air, so was birth. Our next competitor will be Jimena Rodriguez. El Olvido by Judith Ortiz Cofer. It is a dangerous thing to forget the climate of your birthplace, to choke out the voices of dead relatives when in dreams they call you by your secret name. It is dangerous to spread the clothes you are born to wear for the sake of fashion, dangerous to disdain, dangerous to use weapons and sharp instruments you are not familiar with. Dangerous to disdain the plaster scenes before which your mother kneels, praying with embarrassing fervor that you survive in the place you have chosen to live. A bare, cold room with no pictures on the walls. A forgetting place where she fears you will die of loneliness and exposure. Jesus, Maria y Jose, she says, el olvido is a dangerous thing. stand-up stretch break and let our competitors gather their, gather their thoughts, take a breath, maybe get ready for their second poem, uh, and, uh, and then move on. But for now, let's welcome our next uh, competitor. It is Bryce Ronhar. Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. 
Some say the world will end in fire. Some in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. And for our final competitor in round one, please welcome Ava Ross. Cadillac Moon by Kevin Young. Crashing again, Basquiat sends fenders and letters headlong into each other, the future, fusion. Big Bang, the Big Apple, Adam is behind him, no sirens in sight. His career of careening since, at six, playing stickball, a car stole his spleen, blindsided. Move along, folks, nothing to see here. Hit and run, Red Cross. The pill pale ambulance, inside out he hitched to the hospital, joy ride. Hot wire. Oh, the rush before the wreck. Each Cadillac a Titanic. An iceberg waiting to meet its match. Cabin flooded like an engine, drawing even dark shine from below deck. Flats fix. Chop shop. Body work while you wait. In situ the spleen or lean. Anterior view removed. Given Gray's anatomy by his mother for recovery. 151, reflection of spleen turned forwards and to the right like pages of a book. Basquiat pulled into orbit with tide. The moon, gold as a tooth, a hubcap gleaming, gleamed. Shine, swimming for land, somewhere solid to spin his own obit. Take a couple of minutes to stretch. Our, our round two will begin with Ava reciting. Just so want to give her a couple of minutes to gather her breath and maybe prepare her second ball. So if you'd like to stand up and stretch, there's a drinking fountain just down the hall. Maybe a four or five minute break, and then we'll come on back. Uh, if you need to use the restroom, there are uh, restrooms on this floor at this end for the women, and there's a you can use the staff beds. A neutral, a gender neutral bathroom just around the corner by the mail room as well too. All right, so we'll take it just a four to five minute break. It's, it's about 6.22 right now, so we'll come back just a few minutes before 6.30. Okay, thank you. In that black box, can you just press on? So, uh, please welcome back to the stage for a second reading or recitation, Ava Ross. Mr. Darcy by Victoria Chang. In the end, she just wanted the house and a horse, not much more. What if we didn't own the house? Or worse, not even a horse. How do we separate the man from the things, the things from a man? Is a man still the same without his reins? Here, it rains every 15 minutes. It would be foolish to marry a man without an umbrella. Did Cinderella really love the prince or just the prince on the curtain in the ballroom? Once I went window shopping, but I didn't want a window. When do you know it is time to get a new man? One who can win more things at the fair. I already have four stuffed pandas from the fair. I want fair and square. It is time to be less square, to wear something more revealing. In North and South, she does the dealing, gives him the money in the end, but she falls in love with him when he has the money, when he is still running away, if the water is running in the other room. Is it wrong for me to not want to chase it because it owns nothing else? When I wave to a man, I love what happens when another man, with a lot more bags, waves back. <laughs> Thank 
judges a little more time to compile their scores as we move between competitors. It looks like really much. So, please welcome back to the stage Bryce Ronhard. The City of Sleep by Rudyard Kipling. Over the edge of the purple down, where the single lamplight gleams. Know ye the road to the merciful town that is hard by the sea of dreams, where the poor may lay their wrongs away, and the sick forget to weep. But we pity us, O oh pity us, we wakeful, O oh pity us. We must go back with policeman day, back from the city of sleep. Weary they turn from the scroll and crown, fetter and prayer and plough. They that go up to the merciful town, for her gates are closing now. It is their right in the baths of night, body and soul to steep. But we pity us, O oh pity us, we wakeful, O oh pity us. We must go back with policeman day, back from the city of sleep. Over the edge of the purple down, ere tender dreams begin, Look, they may look at the merciful town, but they may not enter in. Outcasts all from her guarded wall, back to their watch they creep. But we, pity us, O oh pity us, we wakeful, O oh pity us, we must go back with Policeman Day, back from the city of sleep. Thank you. There's no accounting for happiness, or the way it turns up like a prodigal who comes back to the dust at your feet, having squandered a fortune far away. And how can you not forgive? You make a feast in honor of what was lost, and take from its place the finest garment, which you saved for an occasion you could not imagine. And you weep night and day to know that you were not abandoned. The happiness saved its most extreme form for you alone. No. Happiness is the uncle you never knew about, who flies a single engine plane onto a grassy landing strip, hitchhikes into town, and inquires at every door until he finds you asleep mid-afternoon, as you so often are during the unmerciful hours of your despair. It comes to the monk in a cell. It comes to the woman sweeping the street with a birch broom, to the child whose mother has passed out from drink. It comes It comes to the lover, to the dog chewing a sock, to the pusher, to the basket maker, to the clerk stacking cans of carrots in the night. It even comes to the boulder in the perpetual shade of pine barrens, to the, to the rain falling on the open sea, to the wine glass weary of holding wine. Seraphim Subjugation of a Wild Indian Reservation by Natalie Diaz. Angels don't come to the reservation. 
Bats, maybe. Or owls. Foxy model things. Coyotes too. They all mean the same thing. Death. And death eats angels. I guess. Because I haven't seen an angel fly through this valley ever. Gabriel? Never heard of him. No a guy named Gabriel. He came to hear one powwow in state. Typical Indian. Sure he had wings. Jailbird that he was. He flies around in stolen cars. Wherever he stops gets girls like gourds from women's bellies. Like I said, no Indian I've ever heard of has ever been or seen an angel. Maybe at a Christmas pageant or something. Nasarmeen Church was one every December. Organized with Pastor John's wife. It's no wonder Pastor John's son is the angel. Everyone knows angels are white. Quit bothering with angels, I say. They're not good for Indians. Remember what happened last time some white god came floating across the ocean? Truth is, there may be angels. But if there are angels up there, living on clouds or sitting on thrones across the sea, wearing velvet robes and golden rings, drinking whiskey from silver cups, we're better off if they stay rich and fat and ugly exactly where they are, in their own distant heaven. You better hope you never see an angel in the rest. If you do, they'll be marching you off to Zion or Oklahoma or some other hell they mapped out for us. Whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here's the deepest secret nobody knows. Here's the root of the root, and the bud of the bud, and the sky of the sky, of a tree called lie, which girls higher than soul can hope, or mind can hide. And that is the reason that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. of Our Blood and State by James Shirley. The glories of our blood and state are shadows, not substantial things. There is no armor against fate. Death lays his icy hand on kings. Scepter and crown must tumble down, and in the dust be equal made with the poor crooked side and spade. Some men with swords may reap the field and plant fresh laurels where they kill, but their strong nerves at last must yield. They tame but one another. Still, early or late, they stoop to fate and must give up their murmuring breath when they, pale captives, creep to death. The garland withers on your brow, then boast no more your mighty deeds. Upon death's purple altar now, see where the victor, victim, bleeds. Your heads must come to be cold tomb. 
Only the actions of the just smell sweet and blossom in their dust. with a chance to continue on toward the national competition in Washington, D.C. So before I do so, there's a lot of clock people to say one more chance to just applaud for all of you. <laughs> this is very hard to And to you, the audience, we hope that this evening has been memorable and inspiring, and maybe you can see the amazing work that students can do and how poetry can actually be an inspiring part of life in a way to see the world in a fuller and richer way. With that in mind, thank you for being here and supporting our Bulldogs. And then finally, you know, so we'll start with, uh, we have two runners up. And we'll announce those and then we'll congratulate them. In our second runner up is Josephine Jensen Pineda. So our first runner up is Ava Ross. Poetry Out Loud school winner is Lisbeth Lucas Alvarez. And uh, let me get a photo with all the contestants here in just a second, so we'll turn the lights on and you can come say congratulations to your favorite bulldog. So thanks, everybody. Don't run away, everyone. Stay there so we can take a picture. Look cute for a second. Rip up. You know, gotta look like a dude. He smiled. 
One, two, three, say poetry on three. One, <laughs> two, three. Poetry! Right, you did. All right. Nice <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> take your voice. You all look beautiful, okay. All right, we're good. Any more pictures? Okay. Come on, you guys, meet your, meet your floor. Come on down, you guys. You don't need to stay on stage anymore tonight. <laughs> 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 